Hello and welcome back to another Patty Stamps video. I am very excited to share these cards with you today. I created them with this new waterfront stamp set from Stampin' Up! And I shot the whole video and completely forgot to put these really fun Adirondack chair dies onto the cards after I finished up the watercoloring. So I just wanted to pop in first show you that this is what the completed cards look like. And it does feature the seasonal layers, thinlet dies. This is the chair. I die cut them with these wood textured designer papers. Here are some of them, some examples. You can also die cut it with regular cardstock, colored cardstock. You can do whatever you'd like. I just chose to do the wood on these cards. And during this video, you will see how I made the card, how I did the watercoloring, and the whole background here with the beach scene featuring the waterfront card. So let's get started. Wow, I am really excited to show you how I made these cards featuring the Stampin' Up! Waterfront stamp set. This is in the new Occasions catalog, this is January 2018, so this is new. You may be watching this later, so it might have been around a while, but it has all these amazing pieces that you can combine in different ways. Let me show you a couple of other cards I've shared before. This is Patty Bennett, and I blog at pattystamps.com, and I had already blogged these, and it was just comparing two similar layouts but a beach scene and a mountain scene with this waterfront set. So here's another one, beach and mountain with the waterfront set. And then two more, beach and mountain with the waterfront set. So I had shared those at pattystamps.com and then I saw a, an idea similar to this on Instagram by Stamp with Amy K. And so I sort of borrowed her general idea of the circle and the beach, but I changed it up, of course, because that's what stampers do. We see an idea and then we kind of run with it and we do something different. So this is actually watercolor paper and I die cut it with the stitched shape framelit and I made about 20 of these. I've, I've got a lot of them in the works here. They all do turn out just a little bit differently. The water does anyway. So what I'm going to show you is how I created the water and then how I stamped the images on top. These are the colors that I used on these cards. Daffodil Delight, Calypso Coral, Soft Suede, Lemon Lime Twist, Crumb Cake, Island Indigo, and Bermuda Bay. All of these will be on the corresponding blog post at pattystamps.com. The stamp I used for the water is this one right here. This is a photopolymer set, so it's completely clear. And that is the image that I used. And I used two ink pads, Bermuda Bay and Island Indigo to create the water. So let me show you what I did. I'm actually going to do three of them because I want to show you how differently these turn out. I inked the stamp with the Bermuda Bay and I stamped, I tried to stamp a little below the halfway mark. So I inked it twice and then I just did that to kind of get some of the ink off. So a little bit below halfway, Let's scoop this over, ink it again, and then just kind of get some of the ink off. So I'm going to do a third one. So a little below halfway, ink it again, and then just get some of the ink off. And then I just sort of lightly touched that stamp onto the Island Indigo because this is a really powerful color. And I'm just going to sort of lightly just put a little bit of color on there. And you can see I'm actually using it three times on there. Then I took my Aqua Painter and I've shared this with you before. I have just a little dish with one of these uh, cotton make wake up 
cotton makeup wipes. I don't know that, why that was such a tongue twister. And I use that just to sort of dab off and catch some of the water so it's not too watery. And then I went across and I sort of went upwards and then I came back down. And by doing that, you're softening and blending that ink, but it allows you to get a nice straight horizon line. In my mind, it needs to be a straight line. I realize in real life, maybe it's not, but in my little world, in this card, it is. So I'm gonna do the third one kind of quickly because before this dries, I do wanna show you this next little step. So then remember this stamp that had a little bit of Island Indigo on it? I am going to actually touch it again and it's going to, oops, I just smeared that. Gosh darn. Well, we won't be using that one. Darn. <laughs> oh well, it's only paper, right? <laughs> so do you see how just by dabbing, barely dabbing on there, I have just added a little bit more color. Now I'm gonna go back to the Bermuda Bay and I am going to add a little more color. And that's pretty much what I did with these. You can see as it dries, it sometimes it just start, starts to look a little bit different. Some of them I went heavier on the Bermuda Bay, I mean the Island Indigo, you can see that, that it's darker. This one I had a little more water. This one I stamped that Island Indigo darker. So you can see how they just really come out different. It, it's just kind of fun and amazing to see how they turn out. So as soon as that dries, then I'll move on to the next step. Before I go on to the next step, I just thought maybe you'd like to see a little bit more close-up of those finished cards. You can see I finished them with different paper and different ribbons, and I'll show you that greeting in just a moment, but that is what the finished card is going to look like. So we're going to stamp the green grass, the sand, the palm trees, the sun, and those cute little beach huts. And by the way, if you didn't see, I've done a few watercolor videos recently. If you didn't see this tip, I just want to show you this while I have the aqua painter out. Have you seen my tip about keeping these hair color applicators handy at your crafting desk? I have one with water, one with uh, rubbing alcohol. And I love it because of this long, narrow tip. And what it allows me to do is just unscrew this, and when I need water in my aqua painter, I can just pour it in with this fine tip, put this back on, and keep going. Some of you, I'm sure, have access to a sink closer to your craft space than I do. Mine is a couple rooms away, so it's just handy to have that. So just thought I'd pass that on. I got that at a beauty supply store where you can get you know, nail polish and hair color and all those different things. So the next step was that I stamped, I think I did it this way, I stamped Lemon Lime Twist and that was some grass. Let me grab one of the finished ones here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so we're kind of going for that. Now on this one you can see I stamped the water up a little higher and my palm trees are kind of running off the edge there. So that's why I said it's really best to try to keep your water a little bit lower than halfway. And then I used crumb cake for sand and it's the same image. I just cleaned it off. And I did one sort of across the horizon and then filled in that little gap so that that makes some sand. Then next is the palm trees and that will be soft suede and lemon lime twist. So here are the trunks of the palm trees and so those are off to the side and don't think we need that anymore, so then we'll do the palm tree tops. I'll 
try not to stick my head in the camera, but still try to get it. Hey, that's pretty good. And that would actually be really nice just as is if you didn't want to add the other elements. But I'll just show you how I did those. I actually took a post-it note and I put it just across my horizon to stamp the sun. And all of these stamps are in the set. So I'm going to explain that little blob of orange here to you and show you what I did and then show you how you can uh, work with that. So I didn't like the sun just in orange and I didn't like the sun just in yellow. And so here's what I came up with. And it might make some of you cringe, but never fear. I'll, I'll show you what I did and we'll show you how to work with it. So I stamped it in Calypso Coral. I stamped off and then, yes, I stamped it into my Daffodil Delight. And I know it put some of that color there, but I'm gonna show you how you can fix that. But I liked how those two colors mixed on the stamp and um, it was different than stamping it in yellow and stamping it in coral. This was a different look. So I, that's the look I liked and that's, that's what I did. But let me show you how you can fix this. So if you ever get ink on an ink pad that you didn't want there and you wanna fix it, all you need to do is grab a paper towel and blot up the color that shouldn't be there and might have to go to a, a couple different parts of the paper towel just to get all of the, the wrong color up. So most of that is gone. There's just a little bit there, but it's not really going to affect the pad. And then you can just put drops of the correct color of reinker. And if you're not purchasing the reinkers when you buy your ink pads, I would really suggest that you get in that habit because it is great to have the reinkers and have them handy. Make sure that they're there when you need them. And also, if it's an in color, you want to make sure that you are getting that reinker before it sells out because you don't want to have your ink pad be obsolete, you know, after a little while. So that's just how you repair it. And then you just re-ink the pad and you let it sit. Whenever I re-ink one of my pads, I always let it sit for at least 10 minutes just so that the ink kind of spreads back, you know, back amongst all of the fibers in there and then you can stamp with it and you don't have to worry about any blobs or light and dark or, you know, that kind of thing. And then our last little image is the little beach hut and I did that with Island Indigo. And since this is a solid image, when you press down, you need to make sure that you're giving that ink just a moment to go all into the fibers of that watercolor paper. You cannot simply just stamp like that when you stamp on watercolor paper if it's a big solid image. So that was it. That's basically how I did that cute little beach scene. And my very last step was with my Wink of Stella. And I just kind of looked down from the sun and I just did this right down the water. And I know that that's not showing up on camera, but on the finished cards, it really does look neat because it looks like the sun is reflecting right down the water there. So I know, I'm sorry you can't see that, but it's there and it's really fun. So that greeting, I told you I'd tell you about that, is from A Mother's Flare, and it just says, hope your day is as wonderful as you are, and this set also is in the Occasions catalog. I just thought that was kind of the perfect greeting for this, because this just looks like a wonderful day to me, and so I thought that would be a good greeting to have on there. And the only other thing I was just going to point out is the new Glimmer paper is from the Occasions catalog. You'll find that with the Myths and Magic suite. And I used the Ombre Lemon Lime Twist Ribbon, and this is Celebration 
Bermuda Bay ribbon. So that's how I finished off the cards. I hope you enjoyed those tips. And if you need any of these supplies, you can shop at mystamporder.com or go to pattystamps.com and click on any of the shop online buttons. And if I can help you with any questions, please feel free to ask. If you found this helpful, I would love a thumbs up on this video. Thanks so much for joining me. See you next time.